presentation of People Near Here is made possible in part with the financial support of Domco Tarkett Incorporated. Domco Tarkett Incorporated, manufacturer of vinyl flooring. And by the members of Mountain Lake Public Television, proud to support programming that enriches their lives and the lives of others. Come with us on a wilderness odyssey with a fascinating woman who for decades has guided visitors into the wilds of the Adirondacks. Anne La Bastille and one woman's search for her own Walden's Pond. Next, on People Near Here. And welcome. You know, one of the great things about living in the Adirondack Mountains of upstate New York is that oftentimes you find yourself in the middle of the wilderness. Six million square acres of wilderness, to be exact. But to different people, the word wilderness can mean different things. To some, it might mean stay away, keep out, too dangerous. But to others, it beckons them like a siren's call. Well, on this show, videographer Paul Frederick and I are going to introduce you to a woman who has lived up here in the wilderness of the Adirondacks for much of her life. She is an accomplished ecologist, author, and wilderness guide. Her name is Anne La Bastille, and she's going to tell us why it's easy to live alone without being lonely. There she is right there, Paul. Hi, Anne. Hi, Derek. Would you grab the bow of that for me? Sure. Thank yeah. you so much. I'm glad you found it okay. And Anne has an impressive portfolio of scientific degrees, honorary doctorate degrees, and alumna awards. And she is recognized around the world for her advocacy of wildlife and wild places. Where better to meet her then than at her sanctuary, located at the very threshold of the Adirondack wilderness? Anne invited us up for a couple of days to hopefully discover firsthand what can happen when we leave the frantic world behind and tune into the wilderness. Now, what year did you build this, Anne? Well, it's over 30 years ago, Derek. <coughs> did the, uh, it's a gorgeous cabin. Oh, thank did you. The, uh, where did the logs come from, on the site here? Or? No, nothing was cut on my land that was uh, all pristine forest, so I had it hired out to cut the logs, dump them in the lake. I towed them up behind my little boat, uh -huh. then winched them up with a big um, tongs and cable and a king pole, and then just um, caught them in the middle and put them, swung them into sight. 
mm. over the site. Mm. And uh, you did that because there's no roads in here. No road, no trail, and the only way, only access I have is by a boat or canoe in the summer and ski and snowshoe in the winter. You like solitude, don't you? I sure do. Why? Because I can think, I can write, it makes me feel better, it balances the stresses that I face when I go out into public world, lecturing, doing assignments, consulting, and it, it, it makes my life balanced. Here, in the heart of the Adirondacks, Anne has written dozens of articles and a half a dozen books about her life in the wilderness. When she's not here, she's usually traveling the world in search of other wild places, researching for popular articles or scientific papers. Anne, like Thoreau, firmly believes that in wilderness can be found the preservation of the world. And we're going to drag this uphill to the little secret pond, huh? Well, Great. I'll drag it or carry it, whichever. Okay. No, Xander, we're not getting in yet. I got it. That doggy loves to canoe. Come on, boy. <laughs> Come on. Where's that the beaver, Xander? Watch. You see it? You see the beaver over there? Look, doggy. Where is he? I think that's one of the great things about the Adirondacks is, is that it's beautiful, but it's, they're beautiful. The Adirondacks are gorgeous, but they're unforgiving, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You have to think about that as a guide all the time. Oh, yeah. When I take people out, I have to, you know, have be ready for every everything that could go wrong yeah. from personal injury to storms to figuring out the weather so running out of food <laughs> getting a fish hooked in your thumb and the adirondack sometimes won't help you out huh? the wilderness won't help you out sometimes oh, it's I mean. very giving it gives us our firewood yeah it gives us our sunshine and uh -huh. untouched beaches it gives us um berries and a few things to eat. Not much, though. It's starvation up here. I mean, you'd never live off the land very long. You wouldn't? No, not up here, I don't think. And I mean, I'm speaking about not fishing and not hunting. Right. Because you wouldn't be prepared to do that. Right. I mean, I, I don't guide to hunt and fish. I guide to teach about the Adirondacks, to show the ecology, to read from my books around a campfire, if that's mm -hmm. what people want. And, and somebody so, told me that the Adirondacks, the park is larger than Yosemite. I wrote that in my National Geographic article. Tell me, tell <laughs> Larger me what than it is. Yosemite, Grand Canyon, Blue, Smoky Mountain National Park, um, Yellowstone, and one more, mm -hmm. one other little one. Can't but think of you it can now. put five national parks inside of this park, but we're not a national park. We're a state park, but right. we have just as good, if not better, legislation to protect it than right. most national parks. It's amazing how few people know that it even exists. That's one thing I love about living out here in the, not only in the park, but near the wilderness because you can drink the water most places you go if you're sure there's no um, human septic getting into the, into the lake. And of course we have a pollution committee here and we um, spend a lot of time checking the camps on the lake and we do dye tests and we repair septic systems. But apart from that, <clears throat> even where, where there are lakes with no people on them, I drink the water whenever I feel it's safe and I look around pretty carefully, but I've never gotten sick in the Adirondacks and um, never gotten Giardia, never gotten any problem. And I believe that wild water, I call it wild water, is good for you because it, it um, probably has bacteria in it that are helping your 
stomach and are beneficial and they're not dangerous and it keeps you more fit. And it's a lot better than drinking a chlorine cocktail from a tap, in my opinion. Well, to me, the loon is the most, one of the most majestic birds because it stands for wilderness. It lives in, in, the, in the places where the water is pristine and clear, where there's not many people, where there's an absence or, or very few big motor boats and jet skis and things that can make a large wake and, and wash over their eggs and kill their chicks. And they're very faithful to each other. Um, they, they're keeping in touch. What they're doing right now is calling, saying, "Here I am. Where are you?" And he's saying, "Here I am. Where are you?" And they they just um, have an excellent family life. The way they raise the chicks and protect them, and they're very brave. <clears throat> and anyway, when I go swimming in the morning, it's it's like a quote from Thoreau, who said, um, "I often in the morning saw them sail out of my cove and proceed." in front of me down Walden Pond. And that's how I feel they are here. They're just kind of sitting around, waiting around, and I come down to take my dip, and they're out there, and I scull out to them. I don't splash at all, and I just keep calling very, that a very soft call, and they don't get scared, and they sit there, and they look at me, and I have a, my swim, and I come back in, and that's the way I like to start my day. Well, I think the sun's gone for the day, huh? Yeah, it looks it. It's got to be a real adventure to spend a winter here in this cabin. Oh, yeah. With you and your dogs. And <laughs> That's true. Is it, does it ever get scary? Oh, yeah, a lot. Yeah? <laughs> get scary from big storms, get scary from the fact you could fall and freeze to death on the way. Or break your leg. Give her another cookie, would yeah. you? Come here. <laughs> Come here. Oh. Yeah, if you get hurt, you, you have a very limited time to stay alive. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're out, you know, and nobody knows where you are. Mm -hmm. I'm, I think you probably re remember in my book, Woods Woman, how I wrote about um, going out in that bitter cold day. It was like 25 below zero, and there was a north wind blowing, and it was just really, um, you know, bone chilling. And probably the wind chill was about 50 below, and I got down to the parking lot. And I, I couldn't get the key in the lock. It was frozen solid. And I tried warming it up with a match. And I didn't have a candle. And I didn't have a propane torch. And, and I put it in my mouth and got it warm. And by the time I got it to the key lock, it would freeze. And I, I was despairing of what I would do. There was nobody on the lake. And the whew, closest neighbor was um, five miles away. And what did you do? Well, I just kept working and working, putting my hand on the on the the lock and trying to warm it that way, breathing on it, warming up the key with a match, and finally it went through and I opened the door. But I mean, I, that one little thing like a key could be the difference between possibly freezing to death if I hadn't been able to walk out all that way and find someone, or um, you know, being alive and here today. The simplest things that we take for granted every day right. can kill you in the wilderness. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I love the silence right now. It's real quiet. You can hear the fire. A bird or two, I think. That's important, isn't it? The, the solitude, the quietness. Oh, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> That's one of the reasons I love to live out here, because there's no road around the lake, there's no traffic, there's no um, the occasional outboard motor coming in and out. But this time of year, it's, it's really quiet. And I think of all the things I mourn, changing and getting lost in the Adirondacks is silence, because nobody thinks about it. Nobody cares. They, there's no union for the protection of silence. There's no mm. um, laws about silence, except some lakes have a decibel rating, you know, 85 or 86 decibels, and it's bad for your ears and um, for big, big motor boats. But <clears throat> basically, there is no one out there ranting and raving about protecting and saving silence like they do about birds and other endangered species. And the thing about silence, I think it's very good for stress, and I think it makes you sleep better, and it 
makes me tearful when I think of people in the cities who have to buy a machine that makes white noise to drown out all the cacophony outside. <laughs> And where are we going today? Well, I thought I'd take you up to the other pond. Um, we'll go by canoe and then do a little bushwhacking and then go up to where I uh, have my tiny writing studio oh, and good. where I did my last book. Great. So it should be a nice trip to the woods. Super. And I think the front has come through and I think the rain's going to stop, hopefully. Sandra, come. Beautiful day. Can I put that in here? And where the heck are you taking us here? Oh, don't fear. We're going to a very thick section of balsam and we won't get lost. This is called bushwhacking, isn't it? I promise you we'd bushwhack up to the baby cabin. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It smells great. Believe it or not, this used to be all brushed out. I made this little tiny trail. Derek, I just want you to know this is a very private place for me and very special. It's my little retreat, so I keep it extremely well hidden, as you can see. No trail. Yeah. I got the well hidden part. Careful, there's a beaver yep. tree they took down. Yeah. Take our time to do a little trail clearing here. Trail clearing. Good. All right. Come on. Xandor knows the way. Oh dear. In the oh, beaver no. country here. Oh, this is impossible. Look what yeah. they've done. Yeah. <gasps> hmm. Oh, have my a small word. problem here. The beaver have been to work and they've not only covered up the trail, but blocked it off. And there the it looks trail like. trail goes right across over Yeah, there. it looks three or four feet of oh. water and mud and everything else here. So. Oh, uh, there's their dam right down there. They blocked that whole section of river up. Well, what we can do, it really will be bushwhacking. We can take the canoes back on... Um, wait, let's let's check one thing. Let's I think we might right be able to get here. in uh, down this end. Yeah, walk see across if we here. might get across there. Okay. Because if we get up on that hill, then we can just take the ridge over. I think just so follow the... Okay, good. Great. Let's just see if it's any shallower. Boy, look how those guys bit that big tree. Yeah. Ooh. Come on, Xandor. Okay, Derek, be real careful because these sticks are very slippery and here's where the water's flo flowing over, so watch your step. And isn't it just amazing how those beavers can change the landscape yeah, in this one is year? Very, Look at it. Yeah, it's impressive. <laughs> and all with their teeth yeah. <laughs> and their little paws. <laughs> yeah. They use their little paws a lot. And you say that this dam was not here last year. It was not here last year. Huh. So they've done it all like over the fall well. and this, la this summer. It gives you a summer greater respect 98. for the phrase, busy as a beaver, huh? <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> okay, watch yourself going down yep. here. Come on, Xandor. Come on, boy. Go on. What? Go on, Xandor. Go on. Good dog. Xandor, come. Now, what I would give for a hot cappuccino right now. <laughs> Hey, we're here, huh? Hey, look, where are you, Sandor? Huh? Great. Come. <laughs> Ooh, look at this cute little cabin. We're, at least we're not lost, Derek. 
Hey. We're not I lost. I wonder who, look who lives here. Thoreau Two. <laughs> ah, very good. Good name. Go ahead. Well, here we go. Right, let's hope everything's okay. That the mice didn't carry it. It's on a rainy day like this. Looks so cozy. <laughs> looks great. Good dog. Yeah, you're a good dog. <laughs> you're the worst time of all, Xander. It's a wonderful little space. I like this. Only 10 by 10. It's great. And uh, very magic with all these candles going. Wonderful. Would you read something uh, from your latest book for us, maybe? I'd be happy to, yeah. Sit over by the fire, is that good? Those glasses. Hey. Right. Ah. Go ahead. Well, I'm going to read from my chapter about how I built this place and how much it means to me, because I built, I wrote part of it right at that desk. Mm. Um, on the yellow pad and pen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, let's see. A warm spell came in early October and had the woods smelling like tangy tobacco and mushrooms from the fallen leaves. The lake had its characteristic weedy old odor from the overturn or purge, as it's called. I slipped my little canoe into the water and nudged the dogs into the tippy craft and began paddling slowly along every foot of this shoreline. I needed to reconnect with my little lake. Chiquica and Zandor fidgeted within the narrow canoe until a flock of geese flew overhead, honking loudly. Mm. Then the dogs sat up and stared. In the last couple of days, I counted 486 birds go over mostly in flocks of 110. As always, the South Flying Geese brought tears to my eyes. So many perils faced them ahead. Hunters with shotguns would be waiting in camouflage blinds, autumn storms, lead shot, high tension lines, and TV towers were all menacing obstacles. For every flock passing, I put my hands into a prayerful gesture and whispered skywards, go fast, Go safe, go high, be careful, and come back to me in the spring. to see women being the major force today that's trying to save our planet environmentally. And I have one thing to say to them when they, you know, start feeling, oh, I'm getting so old, and everybody's saying, oh, you're getting older, aren't you? Is age, defy it. Stay slim, strong, defiant, like a kestrel, flying into the wind. I hate to say it, but I think it's time that we headed out. Oh, we had oh, a wonderful time. Thank sure you. You're it was the best time. It was, it was a <laughs> great visit, and I loved having you. Thanks. Back here in the edge of all this wilderness. Now to get back, uh, I just used this map you gave us, huh? Mm-hmm. And um, you're sure you've got the compass? Yes. And your matches? Yes. And your whistle? A whistle, right? In case I break a leg or Paul does, and we can. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> okay, good. And I'll t we just go back to the pond where we left the canoe. Mm -hmm. go straight. And over the beaver dam. Right, over the beaver dam back, and then we'll leave the canoe by your cabin. You're going to stay here and ride, huh? Oh, yes, I'm looking okay. forward to it. Great. I love to be here, and it's so peaceful, and this is where I really start creating and thinking and contemplating, and it, it just all pours out. Well, 
write another book for us. We can't wait. Thanks. Thanks I'll try Sam. to this winter. Okay. Bye. Go fast and go safe and be careful. Thanks. Presentation of People Near Here is made possible in part with the financial support of Domco Tarkett Incorporated. Domco Tarkett Incorporated, manufacturer of vinyl flooring. And by the members of Mountain Lake Public Television, proud to support programming that enriches their lives and the lives of others.